Welcome to Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters. I'm Michonne Boston. And I'm Tequina Boston. We're your hosts and real life sisters who binge on historical drama. We'll talk about films, fictional adaptations, and dramatic series as windows to the past and mirrors of the present. So fill your teacup or mug with your favorite sip as we explore what's fact, what's fiction, and the so what on historical drama with the Boston Sisters. I'm Michonne Boston. And I'm Tequina Boston. Welcome to Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters, where we talk about historical films and dramatic series as windows to the past and mirrors of the present. Listen to past episodes and sign up for our newsletter on our webpage at michonnebostongroup.com backslash Boston Sisters to stay up to date on new episodes and bonus content. In part two of our Sanditon wrap-up, We talk about Georgiana Lamb, the heiress from Antigua who, in season three, must defend and secure her inheritance as well as her reputation. Joining us in this conversation is Sharon D. Johnson, depth psychologist and story consultant to Sanditon. Georgiana has been on a dedicated search for her mother, who was an enslaved African woman sold away by Georgiana's father, a white wealthy sugar planter, separating mother and daughter. The heiress's search comes to an end in season three, and Georgiana's longings for her mother shed new light on where her true love resides. At the time Tequina and I recorded our conversation with Sharon, we were unable to find the name of the actress playing Georgiana's mother. For promotional purposes, Masterpiece embargoed the information until the premiere of episode five of Sanditon, on PBS when Agnes Harmon finally makes her entrance. We have since learned the actress portraying Agnes Harmon, Georgiana's mother, is Charlene White. You'll hear more about Agnes Harmon's story in this podcast. Sanditon is based on Jane Austen's unfinished novel written a few months before her death in 1817. Sanditon tells the story of independent-minded women making their way in a world where a woman's social and economic status centers on making a good match in marriage. The series is created by Andrew Davies, who is best known for his adaptations of Jane Austen's novels for current times. Welcome back, Sharon, to Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters. Thank you. Good to be back. So now we're talking about Georgiana Lamb again. In season two, Georgiana Lamb's cousin Charles Lockhart tries to trick her into an elopement. He returns in season three to challenge her rights, her heir rights, to her inheritance in court. Are there historical situations from the times of enslavement in the UK that inform that storyline? Yes, uh, I think. One of the things that many people don't know is, you know, this current uh, talk about reparations and we see that certain Caribbean countries removing uh, the queen as their, you know, head of state or what have you. Um, That sort of resistance has been going on for centuries in the UK and in the United States where enslaved or formerly enslaved Africans would fight for some sort of recompense for their experience of being enslaved or what have you. And so a lot of those were personal correspondence, but many of them were court cases. There's a a book edited by the journalist Herb Boyd uh, called Autobiography of a People. And the book is really uh, a compilation of segments of different autobiographies Um, and first-person writings of people of African descent. And there are many from these times, from the 18th century, uh, 19th century, there may even be 17th century writings where Africans would take their former enslavers to court to fight for 
uh, recompense for the work that they've done. In this case, uh, in Sanditon, because uh, Georgiana, it was something willed to her by her father, uh, that sort of strengthened her position. And that's why her cousin, uh, you know, fights it, says, yeah. Um, But yes, there are many of those sorts of cases where Africans would go to court to fight for money, property, their family to be returned to them, all sorts of things. So it has a broad historical uh, uh, reality at its core. Well, speaking of family, uh, Georgiana's storyline includes this quest she has to find her mother. What is the psychological need uh, of Georgiana's quest uh, for that need to reconnect with her mother, whom uh, she didn't know because her father sold the mother away? So I know generally women sort of fight against this. Why is everything blamed on the mother? But the fact of the matter is that the feminine uh, energy in our psyche is powerful, right? And by extension, women in society uh, sometimes pretend that we don't know we have that power, right? And because... Mm -hmm the way we abuse that power is not necessarily physical. It's usually emotional or psychological. We can get away with being abusive under the radar, right? And, and yes, I'll say that I'll continue to say that, that instead of pretending we're powerless, we need to lean into, um, the power that we do have in a conscious way so that we're not being abusive with it. Georgiana didn't have that opportunity to um, experience mother energy in a way because she was, to- she was told lies about it. You know, her mother was taken away from her and then she was told lies about where her mother was. And so the, the mother wound, so to speak, is deep. And I'm trying to, 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 I'm not sure, again, I'm not sure what episode it falls in, so I'm trying not to spoil. But um, so we see this conflict, like, why should I believe you, right? And it's not Mm -hmm. until the gift is revealed that she realizes, okay, you really are my mother. And then once that realization happens, the healing, the real healing can begin because she can uh, be vulnerable to that feminine energy and trust that it's not going to be abusive and abandoning like her for, as her original experience was. So, in general, I think that storyline, number one, the character of Agnes, I think underrated. That is one of the more powerful characters in the series to me. And again, I, I give, I give yes. credit to the actress because she played it with just the right temperance. It, it, it's fabulous, right? So her insight, her instinct to protect Georgiana, her her ability to see through BS, Mm -hmm. she played it so beautifully. And the way she counters, uh, I'm forgetting the... the, the, Lady Montrose. Thank you, Lady Lady Montrose, Montrose, who's trying to get her two children married off. And the way she kind of just has her eye on Lady Montrose, just a fabulous 
uh, portrayal, I think, which is underrated. And her importance in the story is is crucial. And the things, all the yeah. things that she is responsible for doing. Again, I know this is a spoiler because this happens in the last episode, but masterful, beautiful, and, and appropriate. Um, and so part of it is, yeah, Georgiana's sadness and mistrust is because that primary care was taken from her. Um, and then she heard lies about it. So it, it, it was important to come back to that. And that's frankly one of my favorite storylines. It definitely was our favorite storyline. And um, it's interesting because you have two mothers, Lady Montrose and Mrs. Harmon, Agnes Harmon, looking out for the interest of their children, but in terms of their values, are coming from very different places. Um, so that was like very interesting to see. And then as you were talking, Sharon, I was thinking if Georgiana didn't grow up with her mother, but on top of that, she was the child of the sugar plantation owner, even her relationship with other black people in that plantation would have been lopsided. It it couldn't be nurturing because of the power differential in that relationship. So that, 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 um, as you were talking, that, that was another insight I was, I was having. Now, Mrs. Wheatley was played by Flo Wilson. She's the Colburn's housekeeper. She's black. She talks about how grateful she is that she grew up with both her parents and expresses a kind of uh, sorrow that Georgiana didn't have that experience. Um, so can you say even more about family connection, why it's so important from a historical and cultural context? Because I know that one of the big pieces after emancipation in the United States was Black people on the road looking for family. So again, that's another misconception. Some writings say that, you know, Africans were just walking around aimlessly. It's like, no, it, it wasn't aimless. They were trying to find their loved ones, right? Um, and I think Georgiana doesn't quite absorb Mrs. Wheatley's um, extension of, of, of empathy or sympathy. Uh, because Georgiana's on a different quest. Georgiana has um, numbed that yearning for family connection, for real connection, and is just looking for a relationship of convenience to protect her fortune. Um, what I liked about that short exchange between her and Mrs. Wheatley is, again, the historical um, uh, the historical education. Just in that little, you know, two to four sentence exchange, we learned that, oh, there were Africans who were not separated from their families, who did get to um, have that, that container. And we see the difference. We see uh, that Mrs. Wheatley has a certain um, posture of self-knowledge, perhaps, and is able to speak to Alexander in a way that perhaps another Black person might not be, you know, it might not be acceptable. Um, and it also gives her um, insight into the Colburn's own family dynamic. And we see the difference between her posture, even though she's older, 
but we see that Georgiana could become a different kind of person without that intervention. Um, and I think because Georgiana is just turning 21, she's not quite, she doesn't quite understand how crucial that the family relationship is to her own healing and her own well being. And so she's just on a, a, a quest for monetary security, social security, and not understanding how the emotional side of that will contribute to her emotional secu- to her social and 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 class security um so it, it again it was a short segment but it was important to point out that there not all africans had the same experience and mrs wheatley was not separated from her family and that gives her a certain level of wisdom definitely And grounding, too. Yes, grounding. That obviously Georgiana is still trying to find. By the time we publish this podcast, it will be revealed that Agnes Harmon is Georgiana's mother, for those who are keeping pace with Sanditon's story on PBS Masterpiece. Uh, We talked about how the longing and the power of mother's influence has. But um, when she and and Georgiana embraces, accepts Miss Harmon when she sees her, the connection is, and I think we mentioned this in the last podcast, the cowrie shell um, bracelet that she had that uh, was in the things that were sent from Antigua back to Sanditon that Georgiana opened and found that, and that was there. So that was that connection, as we mentioned. And you talked about working with the creative team to place that piece as the connector between Georgiana and her mother. Tell us how you worked with the creative team of Sanditon now that we've see, we now see the mother and we know who she is, how did you work with the creative team in building this character and her story and her relationship with her daughter? It actually started with that cow. It was actually a, a necklace. Um, it started with that. Uh, before we even see Agnes, Mary says, you know, these things were in, you know, Tom's stuff. And this is stuff that you're, you know, your mother's alive and she left you something. Um, So that's the first thing we see. That's the first time that Agnes is present. And it was supposed to be a, a, the original sort of draft said a a crucifix or something. And I said, no, her mother wouldn't give her a, a Christian symbol. I said cowrie shells because it represents wealth. Um, ironically, her mother left her wealth just as her father did. So for me, it had all those levels of, no, 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 it wasn't just the you know white slave owner who had something of wealth to leave her. The mother left her wealth from her own culture as well. Um, and wealth beyond the cowries, wealth of wisdom, wealth of rebuilding the relationship. Um, And so from there, it was just really important that uh, her mother wasn't just a plot point. Um, And again, just like the short exchange between Mrs. Wheatley and Georgiana, we only see uh, Agnes in maybe the last two episodes, the last, we see like the last two episodes. Five and six, yeah. Um, But her exchanges had to be purposeful. 
And so since she was introduced to help Georgiana's arc of healing, then everything she did had to be purposeful. So yes, she had to be um, not just sitting in the, you know, sitting room with everyone, but she had to have a purpose. She had to have a point of view about every single thing that was going on. And that helped not, not just make her, you know, an insertion, like, okay, her mother's here, you know. And again, no long speeches necessarily, but how she interacted with every with everyone else was crucial, and it had to be purposeful. And then the scene, again, I don't want to spoil, but the the one of the last scenes with her and Georgiana together. This is after the whole confusion about why she actually was there, etc that even, you know, the executive producer said that moment where, well, I'm about to describe something that may can be considered a spoiler, but that moment where Georgiana just lays on her mother and her mother just, t- everybody said that was that they were done. They were just, it just, that was the, sort of the, the 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 high point of the whole character arc to finally see Georgiana melt that whole facade and sink into her mother's arms and her mother not weepy just I got you you know that was that was key see I'm getting emotional yeah, I'm teary just from the description again yeah. and I saw it yeah and it was teary then as well it was, It was key. So again, the little things that, you know, you don't need a big speech or whatever. It was, it was so powerful. So I think that just a picture's worth a thousand words. That moment was worth a thousand words. And I think everybody got it after seeing that. Describing that, it makes me realize why we didn't go deeper into the mother's story. Um, I think of there are people who have had horrific experiences and once they come to a point of safety, I would say, um, it's, they, they don't talk about it. They don't talk about the traumatic experience before because I'm here now and this is where I move from here. But it does bring up Agnes Harmon, the search for Agnes Harmon, before she shows up, I think Georgiana has this story about her father in a way that gives her a little comfort and a feeling of legitimacy about her inheritance and and her connection with a white plantation slave owner. And when her mother arrives, that story just doesn't seem to make too much sense. There's definitely a shift. But her mother doesn't share too many details of that experience with her. Why do you think that is? I mean, I may have explained it already, but within the context of Sanditon and who Georgiana is and who the mother, because I think the mother pretty much, we know who she is, I mean, to the actress credit we seem to know okay we know this one we know her but um why is her part of the story and what happened in Antigua kind of cut short there's that moment I think they're on the beach where uh Agnes is explaining to Georgiana sort of a short like what happened to her and how she ended up there etc um for me, in 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 uh, certainly in watching the performance, if not reading it on the page, I got the sense that Agnes had gone through some. Agnes had 
done the work that Edward <laughs> didn't do. That somewhere somehow Agnes had come to a place of of peace about what happened to her, and her focus was, I need to find my child. Um, because Agnes is again very powerful. She's the one kind of driving all the subsequent things uh, for for Georgiana. Again, I don't want to say because I don't want to spoil it, but, uh, and it is Agnes who helps Georgiana connect back to her roots, so to speak, who she is, so to speak. Um, so I think Agnes, without sort of taking the story off on a tangent, when I watch it, I understand that, okay, Agnes has gone through some sort of healing. She's come to a point where she has come to terms with, with, with what has happened to her. She's in a better place now. It's not that she doesn't talk about it, but it doesn't have a hold on her. It doesn't have a grip on her. Like Georgiana, all of this unresolved, unknown stuff still has a grip on her. And it's not until she gets that mother energy that she's able to, right, in ways that her relationships with Mary and Charlotte could not give her, even though they were there and she needed them for what they were. I mean, when the family stands up behind her, when, when cousin is trying to, you know, snatch her away and she's like, I know who you are. Right. And the family's there behind her. Yes, that's wonderful. But it, it can never take the place of the healing that happened between her and her mother and to make her mother uh, similar in, in energy to Mrs. Wheatley, we get the sense that the same sort of peace that Mrs. Wheatley had because of her fortunate circumstances, that Agnes has now come to that place, even though she had different circumstances. Um, and again, as you said, Michonne, the actress, it's all, I mean, so much of that power comes from the actress's performance of it. And, and again, it, it's my favorite storyline, basically, yeah. We also see in Sanditon, Mrs. Harmon, and Mrs. Wheatley, and then there's Georgiana's first love, and probably I would say her only true love, Otis Molyneux, played by Judah James. They give Georgiana something that, as you were saying, Sharon, Charlotte, Mary, even her, her BFF, Arthur, can't provide her. What is in those relationships that they can give her that the uh, her mother, Otis, Mrs. Wheatley can give her that Charlotte and Mary and Arthur and the Parkers can't provide her. They're not who she is. They're not her genesis, right? Mm -hmm. And I think in this, I, I think that's an important, I don't know if it's by design or it just happened that way, but I think that's an important statement to make, even if you don't know you're making it, that in Hollywood and in general, how, you know, uh, white characters have to be the redeemable, the heroes. And here we're not, we're not making the Parkers her heroes. We're saying, no, they, that was necessary based on, you know, the social structure. Yes, she had to be in their care and et cetera. However, and it's interesting, again, Mary was the one who said, mm, I'm cool, but she needs this. Your mother is alive, right? And from then, right. both Mary yeah. and Charlotte were trying to help her find and navigate that relationship. Um, and I, I, I think that that as a statement is profound and necessary that who you are 
and from whom you come is important. And while other arrangements and relationships may be helpful, they're not it. And so somehow the real healing and peace doesn't happen until you in some way form that relationship with your genesis, who you are. I mean, we, we hear foster uh, people in the foster, who were in the foster care system or adoptees saying that same thing. At some point, wh- who did I come from? Who is the flesh of my flesh and the bone of my bone, right? Um, and so without, you know, sort of hanging a hat on it, that's, that's what the statement is and was. Um, and as far as, as Otis, Georgiana tells, tells her cousin, um, you know, pretty much that Otis is her true love, you know, her true love. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and so he sort of entices her with, you know, that's in the past. Let's, you know, new things, whatever. But I like that Georgiana was able to complete that arc, that the story didn't end with, oh, well, you know, I'm just a black displaced person, but I found happiness with my, you know, lovely white family. Um, That it was like, no, you need to find your black family. Right. And it's beautiful. And it didn't, it, it, it didn't disrupt the other relationships. Right. Right. It, yeah. it it just broadened the expanded the circle of, of friends, right? But I just yeah. thought that was so important. And I didn't again the performances are what gave it the resonance because you can kind of say anything on the page, like, okay, this should happen or the mother should do this or the but until that's brought to life with a performance. Whew. I, I love it. I love it. And that's why we love historical drama and films. <laughs> Sharon, we are now at the end of Sanditon for you and um, for and the audience that's watching it. Well, the audience, <laughs> I was about to say the audience is what is on the horizon for you now that um, Sanditon is a wrap? And um, I'm sure you've got other things on your plate going forward. Tom Jones, which is coming up yes, in, in, in April. And so I, I did work on that. And there are other PBS Masterpiece projects that I'm working on. None have the resonance, I think, of Sanditon. And I think it's because of the viewer, the oh. viewers and the passion. Wow. Um and part of it is me just saying, wow, you know, the public, they love this series. They love this series. Um, and so, yeah, so there are other, you know, PBS Masterpiece projects that I'm working on. Again, still teaching. Um, coming up, I there's some traveling that I need to do. Um, but yeah, you know, something always comes in to fill the, to fill the vacuum, definitely. Uh, also doing a lot of uh, scholarly writing. So there's a, a publication that just came out, uh, was published by uh, Rutledge on psychological contributions of women of color, really dealing with some of the early pioneers in psychology. And I have a chapter in that book on one of my muses, Dr. Celestine Louise Smith, who was the first certified Jungian, black Jungian analyst um, in the United States. And I actually dedicated my dissertation to her. Um, Now it's been 11 years since I defended my dissertation. Um, So yeah, so, you know, the void always fills itself, but also the void is filling itself with me just, you know, relaxing. (laughs) 
Well, as a friend of mine would say, you have a rich and textured life for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's a good life. I, if I never do another thing, I would be happy. You can catch Sanditon on Masterpiece, which airs Sunday nights on PBS. Check local listings. You can also stream the series on PBS Passport, the PBS Masterpiece Prime Video channel, and for free for 14 days from broadcast on pbs.org backslash masterpiece. We invite you to share this episode of Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters with someone you know who would enjoy the conversation. Subscribe to Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters and enjoy past episodes wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Visit our website at michonbostongroup.com backslash Boston Sisters for more information and resources related to this and other podcast episodes. Sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date on future episodes and bonus content. You can write us at podcast at michonbostongroup.com. Like and share historical drama with the Boston Sisters on your social media. This is Michonne Boston. And this is Tequina Boston. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters, a podcast about historical films and series dramas. Visit our webpage at michonbostongroup.com backslash Boston Sisters. Tell us what historical dramas you're watching. Who knows? We may do a show about it. Sign up for our newsletter, subscribe to the podcast, and share it with the people you know who binge on historical drama. Historical Drama with the Boston Sisters is brought to you by the Michonne Boston Group. The views and opinions expressed on historical drama with the Boston Sisters are those of the speakers and do not represent the positions or views of the Michonne Boston Group, its clients or affiliates. This is Michonne Boston. And this is Tequina Boston. Thank you for listening.